Hello, hi, welcome again to Hope Alive with Mary. I am super excited to be here again, speaking to you, encouraging you, saying to you, never give up hope, keep your hopes strong and alive. How are you all doing? I hope everybody is keeping their hopes strong there. Um, I'm going to speak about a very, very important topic today, a very, very thing, uh, important message. Please listen to the end and don't forget to subscribe, share our video. I'll start with um, a story and it's um, something that personally happened to me. Um, some years ago, they, um, I was going through an issue and that's what better this for Hope Alive. Um, I was going through a lot at the time, and to sometime in 2005. It looks like my world was crumbling around me. Everything didn't make sense. It's like um, the heaven held, released his venom upon my life. It's like heaven was shut. It was like God had disappeared into oblivion. That was how it felt like at the time. Now, prior to this time, there was a particular person that I was supporting in her journey, um, helping through her pains and, you know, what she was dealing with. I was providing all manner of support and help to her, both uh, professional help, legal help, and um, emotional help to this um, person at the time. So, on this particular day, I was overwhelmed with my own problem. I was overwhelmed with my issues. I was actually sitting in, on, in my room on, uh, on my bed. It was on a Saturday. I had received a terrible, you know, a worse news. Uh, well, how would I put it? It was, the matter was progressing. And I did, um, on the Friday, I received a, another bad news that I didn't want to hear. And then while I was still trying to, you know, make a sense of that news on this, on Saturday, because over the night I had been crying, you know, and everything. Um, that Saturday, I sat to my, I didn't want to go downstairs. I didn't want to have breakfast. I just want to wait in God's presence. Just cry to my God. And then I, as if to make it worse, a letter came in through the post. My children brought in the letter to me and then they handed the letter to me. I opened the letter. I was expecting that letter i was expecting something positive which would have you know alleviated the pain i was in at the time that letter came through the post and it was oh my goodness it was the reverse it was the exact opposite of what i expected so it was like god i just like god you should have just killed me just 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 kill me i mean how worse can this get i was here dealing with an issue already and now it's being compounded it's getting worse where am i turning to you know, I, and I was, I'm just trying to describe um, the state I was in when this particular person's number began to show up on my phone. The person began to ring. Um, I I was still tearing, you no, know, fat, not just tearing up, I was pouring <laughs> tears, boiling, I was crying, and I was calling on God, God, please show up. And then this person's uh, number showed up, the person began to ring, and the first reaction was, I'm dealing with my own issue right now. The first reaction was, I am dealing with something worse than what you are going through right now. So back off. <laughs> so please stop calling me. I even need someone to speak to right now. I need somebody to encourage me. I need somebody to, to say to me, it's okay. I need somebody to hold my hand. I need somebody right now to support me. You know what? So deal with your issue. I've got something bigger than I am dealing with. That was the first you know, thoughts that ran through my mind. That was the first thing, you know, I mean, I'm here dealing with something more serious and you're bugging me. You know, first I didn't pick the call. So she kept calling and calling and she wouldn't stop. I was the point I was like, come on, I was going to switch off my phone. But for a moment, the Holy Spirit just ministered to me and thank God for the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit just ministered to me that no matter what you are going through, no matter the magnitude of what you are going through, your answer a lot of time lies in your helping someone else, looking outward, looking to somebody else, offering help to somebody else, then you get help. So I, you know, so I want to title this looking outward, you know, looking beyond yourself, showing love to someone when you needed love, showing, giving a helping hand when you need help. And then I picked my call, wiped my tears, um, I hope she didn't, I don't think she did because on the other side, she was, I mean, this particular person was crying. Uh, at the other end, she was, you know, I don't know what, you know, then she explained what she was going through. 
um, I counseled this person, I gave the advice, both legal advice and um, encouragement that the person needed at the time. I, you know, prayed with the person, I assured the person, even, you know, when you pray such prayer, the devil will say, you have been praying your own prayer, you haven't even received an answer. And what did I do? I shut him up and I said, God still answers prayers. I, I encouraged the person, I prayed with the person, I assured the person that God is going to turn around the situation. And believe you me, God did. The following day, she called back and she was so excited that, you know, God intervened and, you know, and changed and turned the situation around. I mean, for that moment, but gradually God continued to do the work in that person. And um, by the grace of God, that matter is resolved today. Why am I sharing this with us? We are in a season, we are in the time that every single person, nobody is left out, nobody is exempted with the impact and effect of COVID-19 and the incidental effect that will be coming um, after now, even after the lockdown, businesses are going to suffer. They are suffering at the moment. People are going to lose their jobs. Some are already lost their jobs. Some will be losing their job. Things, it's unpredictable what's going to happen. But the one thing that we must know is that at this time, everybody wants to keep their money. Everybody wants to be wise. Everybody wants to, you know, don't want to go on a spending spray just because you don't know what's going to happen. And sometimes, genuinely, some people are cash strapped or uh, cash tight at the moment so what is the lord saying to you and i today sometimes where you find help where you find peace truly after i finished with the person i was talking about in my story earlier on there was a flood of peace that came upon me i'm serious i experienced peace there was peace that came upon me there was joy why because I, at the end of my session with the person, the person was happy, her spirit lifted, was encouraged, and it made me happy. It did encourage me. So sometimes when you think that I had to hold now, I have to hold back, I am dealing with my own issue, I'm dealing with my own problems, so I haven't got time for you, that has been selfish. Every single one of us, one lesson I've learned over the years and in life is that every one of us have been put here not for ourselves. Nothing that you're going through, nothing that you have is actually for you. You are a channel. You are God's channel to somebody else. You are God's, it, it goes through you and God will use another, what you need is in another person's hand. Okay, so what you've got right now, no, it's not necessarily for you. A uh, story in the Bible is a, the, the, the widow of Zarephath. With this woman was, we, I mean, the situation she was in is similar to what we are facing right now. There was famine. There was no help from anywhere. She's had her last meal to eat and to die. We know with her son. Obviously, she was a widow. So, you know, the plight of widows today and even was still back then. And she's got this child she had to feed. So you can imagine the pain in a mother's heart. She's got this last meal. Don't know when. Her next meal will come. But we thank God that that woman listened to the prophet and she gave out that. And that was the secret. She could have told the prophet, you know what? You haven't got a child. You haven't got a family. So you don't even understand what I'm going through. I've got this last meal to eat. I don't know what's going to happen to me and my child, my son, and whatever. She could have been mean. She could have sent the prophet away. She could have said, no, I'm not going to give. In fact, if you have, you give to me. But what she did was to share. She shared of that last meal. God is saying to us today, look outward. Look at other people around you, no matter how bad your situation is. There's somebody else out there whose situation is worse than yours. Even in your tears, wipe your tears and bring joy to somebody else's life. Wipe your own tears and go out there and put a smile in somebody else's face. By doing so, you will get it. But there's always a, 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 a sowing and reaping effect. Even at this time... Please think about people who haven't got food to eat. You have three square meals. So it's somebody who hasn't got two square meals. There's somebody who hasn't even got one, you know. And my thoughts actually also go to pastors at this time. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about mega churches, pastors, you know, something. I'm talking about pastors, people who are genuinely in ministry, other evangelist pastors, people who are genuinely in ministry and all they, 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 they live by is what comes in. So now church has been locked up um, for close to two months now. So I, my mind really goes to them to say, how are they coping? How are they surviving? How are they, you know, feeding? These are people genuinely who have given themselves up to God. Can we, God allow us, just like he, allow, he used, can we allow God, just like he used um, the widow of Zarephath to feed the prophet at the time? And there is a blessing in doing it. So I encourage you today, look at us. Think about people around you who will need encouragement. Think about people around you who your phone call will make a difference in their life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It's by 
us extending a hand of love and support for each other that we get love back and we get support so i just want to keep it there um keep your hope alive remain strong and if you haven't encountered jesus oh my goodness you don't know what you are missing you don't know what you are missing you don't know i'm serious you don't know what you are missing please come to jesus and i say come to jesus release your faith to put your uh, to believe him that he died for your sin that he rose again and it is all for you he took your place on the cross all you need to do is release your faith to receive what he's already done receive the salvation receive the righteousness he gives you in exchange for your sin and um serve him from then always really love him because he loves you god bless you i'll see you again soon on hope alive mary here again bye